Hi friends, welcome back. This is Santosh Kumar. Today also we'll continue with the root locus rules. In the last class, if you remember, in the last class we discussed about the breakpoints. We have seen the asymptote, asymptotic angle, the centroid, and all. Today we'll see some more points related to the breakpoints. The breakpoints rules. The first one is if in between two pole root loci exist, then there will be minimum one break away point. What it means is see this diagram if in between two pole poles see we have two poles over here one is minus one and a zero in between them we have one root locus means root loci okay then there will be minimum one break away point definitely there will be one break away point greater than one what it means see these two poles will follow this root locus means this pole will start its journey and will come like this like this like this like this like this but they do not meet, want to meet you know the pole will meet to zero only not pole okay so they will break themselves over here and will go to the infinity or, or, or whatever wherever they fi find out the zero isn't it so what is the point is the point is if you have two poles and in between them one rl exists root locus branch you can say other root loci you can say okay okay so definitely there will be minimum one break away point it's clear i think now the second point says if in between two root loci sorry if in between two zeros root loci exist then there will be minimum one breaking point. Okay. Here you have two zeros, minus one and zero. In between them, I have one root locus branch or root loci. Then there will be minimum one breaking point. So definitely some poles will come over here to meet these two zeros. Isn't it? The direction of poles is like this. They will come over here and there will be one breaking point. This is the break in point. So definitely minimum one break in point will be there. Okay. Now let's come to this. In the last lecture, lecture number 27, we discuss about this problem. Correct. So over here we find everything, the centroid, the angle of asymptote and the asymptotic lines all about. And we have drawn this diagram. Correct. So if you'll observe this carefully, this diagram, you know, crossing over here to imaginary axis at this point at this point okay now if you people will ask how to find out this point sir in get examination definitely you may get the questions they'll find out what is the you know point where the root locus branch or root loca loci is cutting to the imaginary axis so how to find it so i have procedure intersection point with imaginary axis okay let me draw the diagram so here is the diagram suppose this is the root locus this is the rl branch definitely it's crossing over here to imaginary axis and our point is intersection point with imaginary axis how to find what is the procedure the first point is from the characteristic equation that is 1 plus gs h of s equal to 0 you have to form the characteristic equation first how you will find in your question definitely the gs hs will be given because the starting point for the root locus is nothing but the open loop transfer function and that is gs hs you have to add plus 1 so you'll get the characteristic equation okay you have done this next write the rh table or rh criteria remember in the last unit we have seen for the characteristic equation how to form the rh table so we have to do that okay the next point is we have to find the k marginal we know all about this so we can do it okay then form the auxiliary equation we have to form the auxiliary equation then then the roots of auxiliary equation give the valid and invalid point of intersection with imaginary axis. Don't worry, we'll, when we'll come to the problem, these points will be clear out. Okay. 
the next point is for valid intersection k marginal should be positive so k marginal should be positive for the valid intersection so we will know about this when we will do the problem so here i am taking one question g of s h of s is given open loop transfer function k divided by s s plus 2 s plus 4 ok and the question itself is asking find out the intersection point with the imaginary axis so what is the procedure you have to form the characteristic equation first the characteristic equation is 1 plus k divided by s s plus 2 s plus 4 equal to 0 so when you will solve it you will find out s cube plus let a minute 6 s square plus 8 s plus k equal to 0 this is your characteristic equation ok now we have to form the rh table so s cube s square s1 s0 here the coefficient value is 1 then 8 over here it's 6 and k now i'll multiply the 6 with 8 minus k divided by 6 so it will be 48 minus k divide by 6 and this will be 0 ok let's check it 0 ok now what about this point this will come k this into this minus this divide by this so definitely you will get the k value now now what is the next step the next step is we have to find the k value for marginal stability when the system will marginal stable if this this term is 0 isn't it? This will become ROZ. So, 48, 48 minus k divided by 6 should be 0. So, k should be 48. This is the marginal stability concept. So, you can frame this or this is the third order. Directly, you can do this. Inside multiplication, that is 48, should be equal to outside multiplication. Outside coefficient multiplication, that is k. So, this k should be equal this is the condition for marginally stability marginally stability this is the condition so once you find out the marginally stability condition next you have to find out the auxiliary equation or you have to form the auxiliary equation so in direct method i told you you have to make the even power of a is equal to 0 I means 6a square plus k equal to 0 6 s square plus k is nothing but you already calculated 68 equal to 0 s square equal to minus 48 divided by 6 so it will be uh, minus 8 so s is nothing but 2 root 2 plus minus j ok so this is the point on the imaginary axis where your uh, you know the root locus intersecting over here this will be plus 2 root 2 j ok friends over here minus 2 root 2 j ok so this is the directly you can do over here or if you want to do over here same you will do you will form the auxiliary equation that is 6 s square plus k this is your auxiliary equation you will differentiate or oh sorry you have to keep it equal to 0 so the k value already calculated that is 48 you will keep over here is you will get plus minus j2 root 2 ok so this is the procedure to find out the uh, imaginary point intersection means uh, the intersection point of the root locus branch on the imaginary axis I hope it's clear to you now we'll come to the very you know important concept that is the angle of departure and arrival so friends angle of departure and arrival are given for the complex poles and zeros only remember one thing the angle of departure calculated at complex conjugate poles and angles of arrival calculated at uh, complex zero what i mean is so come over here for a particular function or the particular system suppose you have complex poles okay 
you have complex poles now according to the root locus your poles will go to the zeros isn't it so this pole will start its journey but at what angle it will start it how it will go to zero definitely it has to go to zero at infinity or uh, any other place where the zero is available but the condition is how it will go it will go to this side this side this side this side how it will go tell me so that's why this is given that is the angle of departure means you have to find out the angle by which it will depart itself so angle of departure is always given for the poles why because the poles are departing okay zero do not depart only poles departed okay the same thing if i'll take for the zeros here are the zeros given so on the zeros poles will come isn't it the poles will come to the zero but how they will come what is what will be the angle so whatever the whatever the angle by which the poles are coming on this zero is nothing but the angle of arrival isn't it whatever angle is let's take is theta a and the departure angle i'll take theta d okay so now i think the point is clear what is the departure angle and what is the angle of arrival okay friends so how it's given friends if we'll talk about the angle of departure it is given by 180 minus 5 180 minus 5 where this 5 is this 5 is summation of 5 due to p means poles minus summation of angles due to zeros this is your 5 over here and this is the formula to calculate the angle of departure 180 minus 5 this is the phase contributed by all given poles and zeros on a particular node means suppose you are considering this pole at this pole you have to calculate the angle of departure so the formula says that 5d at this particular point is 180 minus 5 so this 5 is the phase contribution of the remaining poles and zeros in the system isn't it now the same thing for phi a also theta a also that is the angle of uh, arrival and the formula is given formula is the same for over here also 180 minus phi so what is phi over here so over here the phi will be uh, phase due to zeros over here zeros will come first minus phase due to poles okay for the angle of arrival the phi will be summation of phi z minus phi summation of phi p and over here for the angle of departure the summation of uh, uh phi poles minus summation of phi zeros okay friends so this is the formula given now we'll calculate all this in the problem okay so everything is clear now now i'll take only problem so each and everything i'll clear out okay friends so friends till now we have done all rules related to root locus now this question is very important for you people why important because in this question i'll follow all the steps and will find each and everything so this is the kind of sum up whatever we have done yet everything will be sum up in this question so please watch it carefully how to draw the root locus if open loop transfer function gshs is given remember always for the root locus you will be given with only open loop transfer function that is ghs ghs okay so let's find out okay so over here number of poles are given okay i'll start okay number of poles the first pole is a is equal to 0 remaining two poles are a square plus 2 is plus 2 equal to 0 let's find out the roots 
so it will be when you will find out it will be minus 2 plus minus 4 minus uh, 4 AC that is 8 divided by 2 so this is minus 2 plus minus 2J divided by 2 so minus 1 uh, plus minus J so finally minus 1 minus J minus 1 plus J three poles you have how many poles number of P number of poles is three number of zeros two okay and number of poles are s equal to zero and s equal to minus one plus minus j okay everything is okay how to start you have given with the open loop transfer function okay you will find out the poles are zeros first then the number the step one find out the poles and zeros okay step two find out the number of poles and number of zeros I'm extremely sorry over here we don't have any zero okay so zeros are zero okay perfectly fine now now next what I can find find out over here by this information I can can I find out centroid yes I can find out center is, is the you know point where the where the asymptote will intersect the real axis okay so let me write over here or I'll show you this is the centroid it is the intersection point of the asymptote to the real axis okay so formula for the centroid is summation of P real minus summation of Z real divide by number of P minus Z okay so let's find it uh, summation of poles that is real I have to consider overall real part only I have to consider so the 0 okay minus 1 don't consider this plus J only real part you have to consider okay and this real it not means only real means you have to remove this complex or, or, or you are not taking this complex not like that you will take the real part of the given poles and the another one is minus 1 again minus you don't have any 0 over here that is 0 okay are you getting so number of poles minus 0 so over here it's 3 and 0 so 3 minus 0 so you have minus 2 by 3 is it clear to you okay so I have found this uh, you know uh, uh, centroid sigma now can I find out the sigma is related to asymptote or not the intersection point of the asymptote how many number of asymptote you have if I'll consider this is the fourth point number of asymptote this is nothing but the number of asymptote is equal to P minus Z over here uh, P 3 minus 0 so definitely I'll get the three asymptotes so number of asymptotes you know the intersection point of the asymptote you know in the fifth point let's find out the angle of asymptote angle of asymptote and that is given by let's take theta a and it's given by 2q plus 1 into 180 degree divided by p minus z where q is from 0 to p minus z minus 1 ok so your theta a is again I am writing over here 2q plus 1 180 degree divided by p minus z p minus z where q is from 0 to p minus z minus 1 ok so p 3 minus 0 minus 1 so it will go from 0 1 and 2 3 minus 1 is 2 ok so 3 values you will get over here and definitely if your asymptotes are 3 
So I'll get the three angles or not? Yes. So 0, 1, 2. Okay. So the first angle is, let's take it 1. That is, you have to keep Q equal to 0 over here. So 2 into 0 plus 1 into 180 degree divided by 3 minus 0. So this is 60 degree. Similarly, if you will find out uh, theta 2, that is the asymptotic angle second, it will be 180 degree and the phi 3 will be 300 degree. Okay friends, now this information or I think 70% enough to draw the root locus diagram. Okay, here I am drawing the root locus. So number of poles you have uh, 3 and uh, is equal to 0 is equal to minus plus minus j okay so let's point out over here number of poles this is the first one over here minus 1 plus j just complex conjugate of this is given over here and that is minus 1 minus j okay so the next point is you have to find out the RL branches. The first point is over. Second point over here is find out RL branches. Okay. What you have to do? You have to find out. So over here, when you will stand over here, you will look to the RHS. Nothing you are getting. No RL branch. What about this two? So these two are the complex. So they will contribute only you know angle of departure and uh, angle of arrival. So directly you will go over here on the infinity. At the infinity you will get 3 number of points or poles and zeros are 3 over here. Definitely you will get 1 RL branch in between them. Okay, These 2 points I will get. So let me draw the RL branch. So this is the RL branch given over here. Okay. Now we'll draw the asymptote over here because we have the information of asymptote. So asymptotes are centroid point is minus 2 by 3. Where is the minus 2 by 3 located? Let's take it over here. This is minus 2 by 3. So from minus 2 by 3, how many asymptotes are going? number of asymptotes are 3 okay so first angle is 60 degree second angle is 180 degree and third angle is 300 degree so the first one this is the asymptotic line going to infinity making 60 degree angle this is another asymptotic line Though they are symmetric with the real axis, so the same thing will come over here. This total angle is nothing but 300 degree. And the third one is going over here on the real axis. On the real axis with an angle of 180 degree. So everything is clear. Asymptotes are clear and uh, your poles are clear. Now, how many poles do you have? Tell me. The poles are 3, number of zeros are nothing, you don't have any zero over here, so they will be on infinity or not? They will be on infinity. Isn't it means all these three poles will go to the infinity, they have to meet to zero. This is the foremost rule, all poles will go to the zeros. Poles will start their journey at k, k equal to 0. They will terminate their journey at 0 where k equal to infinity. Okay. So this is all about this. Now how I will move. So over here you have the complex poles. So whenever you have complex poles definitely see first of all all these poles will go to the zero or not. So this pole these two poles will go to the infinity alongside A1 and 
and A2. What about this pole? This pole simply because the third asymptote is given over here. So this pole is simply will go to like this. Simply it will go to infinity because this is the RL branches also. So at infinity this pole will meet to its zero. Okay, yahan jake dono ka shadi ho jayega. Okay. It will start journey. Yahan se chala ghode pe betha. Ye gaya, ye pura yahan pe gaya. Ye barati a gaya sab. Thik hai? Aur yahan pe milke ye shadi ho gaya inka. Okay. Now, we have remained with these two poles. So, in dono ko bhi ghode pe betha na hai. Okay. So, we need the angle of departure. Remember, for the poles, we need angle of departure. Okay, so let's find out angle of departure. So this is the formula for angle of departure 180 degree minus phi where this phi is nothing but summation of uh, phase due to poles minus summation of uh, uh, phase due to zeros. Okay, so this phi we can find in two ways. Okay, so one is graphical method one is analytical method. I'll show you both. Okay, friends. So let's calculate phi. The phi is nothing but summation of phi p minus summation of phi z. As I told you, this phi we are calculating at this. Suppose let's take this is first, this is second. So at first, I'm calculating the phi. So the phase due to phase angle contributed by the poles. Minus phase angle contributed by zero. So over here I don't have any zero, so definitely this term will be zero. So you will be having only phase angle provided by the poles. So the graphical method I'll show you first. This is my point, and at this point I have to calculate angle provided by poles. So first I'll take this. Let's take it uh, I and this is second one. So the angle of this because of this is nothing but this one or not tell me and the angle because of this is nothing but this. Okay, the reference will be horizontal always and with respect to horizontal I'll find out the angle of the reference one this is the reference one or I can say this is our target so this angle how to find out this angle this is the graphical method so up to here it's 90 no problem at all but you have to find out this angle also so can you find out this angle yes you can easily find out because this is the height given height is 1 because plus j and this part is given 1. So 10 inverse this by this you know very well 10 inverse is sorry 10 theta is uh, uh, perpendicular divided by base. So this angle will calculate so it will be 45 degree. So this remaining is 45 degree and total is 135 degree. So the angle provided by this pole to this point is 135. So this is nothing but 135 plus total pole I'm getting. Okay. Or I'm looking for the total pole because summation. So the angle provided by the first pole is 135 degree. What about this? This is simply provided 90 degree. So this is 90 degree. So total you have one sorry 225 okay so the phi value you got over here now phi d you are looking for so it is 180 minus 225 isn't it so you will get 45 degree minus of 45 degree angle your angle of departure isn't it this is the graphical method okay friends uh, in the next when I'll take the you know on this angle of departure and arrival problem in that I'll show you the analytical method also okay and maybe you people have still some doubts in this I'll clear I'll take this method also there so it will be clear out okay 
So I know my angle of departure is minus 45. Angle of departure means the angle by which this pole will depart. So where is the minus 45 degree? Over here it's plus 45. Over here it's minus 45. Isn't it? So your pole will depart to this. So now you have to two poles you have. If this one is departing by minus 45, this one will depart by plus 45 definitely. Okay. So it will depart like this and it has to move along with this asymptote and will go to the infinity. Okay. Like this. So this is the root locus for the given system. Okay friends. I'll take one more problem or uh, I think it's enough for this lecture in the wait a minute uh, so in the le next lecture we'll see some more problems so all doubts will be clear out we'll meet in the next lecture till then take care and bye